We are still on the topic of plant organs, the shoot system, specifically the fruit. A fruit is a mature ripened ovary that contains the seed or ripened ovules. One function of the fruit is to protect the seeds from adverse environmental effects. So these are the seeds and this part protects the seed from external factors and that fleshy part of the fruit is responsible for storing food and nutrients that attracts animals and once animals fed on the fruits they aid in the dispersal of seeds but some fruits are modified to easily be dispersed by either water wind or other agents for the structure of the fruit if you can still recall the structure of a carpel this part is the stigma this is the style and this is the ovary these are the ovules and this is the ovary wall. The ovules will become the seeds and the ovary wall will become the fleshy part or this part or what we call as the pericarp. The pericarp is further divided into three layers. The exocarp which is the outermost layer, the mesocarp is the middle layer and the endocarp is the innermost layer so the thickness of these layers vary depending on the type and species of the fruit a fruit can be classified as a true or accessory fruit so when we say true fruits these are fruits that are derived from the ovary and its parts while accessory fruits are those that develop from other parts of the flower such as the receptacle or this part an example of that is the mulberry and the pineapple the peduncle or this part for the cashew, the perianth or the combination of the petals and the sepals for the four o'clock family, for the sepals, the rose apples, for the hypanthium are the apples and pears. So what is the hypanthium? This is the cup-like enlargement of the receptacle of a flower that surrounds the ovary. So this is this part. If it is enlarged, we call this hypanthium. In general, there are three types of fruits, the simple, aggregate, and multiple. The simple fruit is further classified into dry or fleshy, while the dry can be further classified as dehiscent or indehiscent. Let us first discuss the simple fruits. So when we say simple fruits, these are fruits that are formed from one matured pistil of a single flower. So remember, one is to one ratio, single pistil from one flower. They can either be true or an accessory fruit. And also remember that a pistil can have a single or multiple carpels. Or they can have a single or multiple ovaries. So a simple fruit can have compartments or locules. As I had mentioned earlier, simple fruits are further categorized into dry and fleshy fruits. When we say dry fruits, these are those with low moisture content, while fleshy fruits are those with high moisture or high water content. And dry fruits are further classified as dehiscent or the fruits that splits at maturity. And indehiscent, those that do not split at maturity. For the dry dehiscent fruits, there are three types, the follicle, pod, and capsule. A follicle fruit develops from one carpel with several ovules as you can see here in the figure this is an example of a follicle and these are the seeds so a follicle is a many seeded fruit at maturity the fruit splits along only one suture or it does not completely open or the fruit does not break into two a pod or a legume is similar to a follicle it also develops from one carpel but at maturity it splits along both the dorsal and the ventral suture, meaning the fruit opens completely or it can be separated into two, like in peanuts and the peas. A capsule, on the other hand, is made up of several carpels and that can either be fused or the syncarpus or unfused or the apocarpus. The way a capsule's fruit splits vary depending on the species. So there are several types of capsules. And we will discuss them one by one. Loculicidal capsule, from the word locule, this type of capsule splits at the midline of the locule at maturity. The example is the lily. So in this type of capsule, the split occurs at the locule or it divides the locule into two. For the septicidal capsule, from the 
word septum, the split the split occurs along the septum or the wall. So in loculicidal, this white part here is the septum. In septicidal, this is the septum. An example of septicidal are the yucas and agaves. For the poricidal capsule, from the word pore, this capsule have pores or opening with round holes over here. Poricidal capsules have long stalks and the wind causes the capsules to sway back and forth or producing that shaking mechanism. And that shaking aids the dispersal of the seeds through the pores. An example of this is the poppies. For silic and silicon, these two are special capsules found in the mustard family. Both develop from two carpels, but a silic is long and slender, while a silicon is short and broad. In addition, in silicon, there is a false septum called the replume, resulting to a fruit with two locules. Pixis is a capsule which has a circumcisal dehiscence. A circumcisal capsule has a lid. This is the lid that will come off from the base of the fruit through this junction. An example of this are the purslings. For the indehiscent fruits or the fruits that do not split at maturity, there are several types. Let's start with the caryopsis or the grain. Caryopsis is a fruit that developed from one carpel containing a single seed. The pericarp is tightly fused to the seed so they are inseparable. An example of this is the corn and the wheat. So this part is the pericarp and in corn, if you eat corn, the membrane-like structure surrounding the, the corn or each kernel is the pericarp. And the one you are eating is the endosperm. Akin is like caryopsis in a sense that it developed from one carpel and produces one seed. The fruit has one seed per ovary. The difference is that in akin, the pericarp is very thin but free from the seed coat. And the seed is attached to the fruit wall at a single point. An example is the quinoa. We also have sipsela, which is also similar to akin but, but it is formed from a double ovary of which only one develops into a seed, as in the DC family, such as sunflower and cosmos. Next is the nut, or also known as glands. So, nuts usually are one seeded fruit with a greatly thickened exocarp. So, in this figure, this is the exocarp, this is the mesocarp, and they have here a very hard endocarp. The pistil that produces the nuts have more than one carpel, but through the abortion process, usually only one seed matures, as in the case of the hazelnuts and the chestnuts. The almonds, cashew, macadamia, and other culinary nuts are not true nuts. They are droop-like nuts. We also have what we call as nutlet or a small version of a nut. Next is the utricle. So this is a one-seeded fruit that is formed from one flower having a single ovary. The ovary wall of this fruit becomes more or less bladdery or inflated at maturity. An example of this is the wolfia or the watermill. So they are the smallest fruits. Samara is usually a one or two-seeded fruit with wings. So, the wings is part of the pericarp that grows out into a fibrous paper-like outgrowth and the function of this is for seed dispersion. An example is the maple fruit. A schizocarp is a fruit formed from several carpels. Each carpel is enclosing a single ovule. So, at maturity, the carpels separate into mericarp. So, one mericarp is equivalent to one carpel. There are several types of schizocarp. The first one is the cremocarp or a two-seeded schizocarpic fruit. So, on maturity, they separate but they remain attached on a common axis and that axis or the common axis is called the copophore. So, for example, this is your cremocarp. 
So at maturity, this fruit will split into two. This is the common axis or the copophore. Copophore. And each one of these is called the mericarp. Next, we have the regma. This fruit splits into many parts called cocci. Each cocci represents a carpel containing one or two seeds. An example of this is the castor fruit. So each one of these is the cocci. Lomentum is a dry legume-like fruit that is transversely constricted between the seeds. At maturity, it splits, it splits at the constriction, so there is one seed per section. Lastly is the carcerule. So this fruit splits into four chambers at maturity, and each chamber is enclosing a seed. And this can be seen in the mint family, such as the basil. So for example, this is your carcerule. It is divided into four chambers. Each chamber is called mericarp, and each chamber has one seed. Now, let's proceed to the fleshy fruits or those with high water content at maturity. We have berry, hesperidium, pepo, pom, and droop. For the berry or the berries, these are fruits that has entirely fleshy pericarp with seeds. Examples are the tomatoes, grapes, and blueberries. So berries are fruits with edible pericarp. So all the layers of the of the pericarp is edible. For Hesperidium, it is like a berry but with a leathery pericarp called rind. So this is the pericarp called rind. The rind is further divided into the colored exocarp or the flavido, which contains the volatile oil glands in pits, and the white mesocarp called the albido. And the endocarp is separated into sections. So each section represents one carpel. So these are the endocarps. So each section here represents a carpel. And these are filled with the pulp or the fluid-like vesicles that are actually specialized trichomes. So an example of Hesperidium are the oranges and other citrus fruits. Pepo is a fruit that has a rigid or leathery exocarp but with fleshy mesocarp and endocarp. So this is the exocarp and this is the mesocarp. And the endocarp in squash is the fibrous-like content. So a pepo is a many-seeded fruit formed from one or multiple fused carpels. Other examples include zucchini and cucumber. Droop has a thin exocarp, fleshy mesocarp, but the endocarp is hard. Examples of these are the mangoes, plum, and cherries. So this is the thin exocarp, the fleshy mesocarp, and this is the hard endocarp or leathery endocarp. Cashew is a drupe. So this is the fruit and this one is the accessory fruit or what we call as the cashew apple. And this is a pseudofruit originated from the hypocarp or an enlarged edible peduncle. Pom is an accessory fruit. The fleshy part is the hypanthium or the enlarged receptacle up to the mesocarp but with cartilaginous core. The pom is an accessory fruit. The fleshy part here is the hypanthium or the enlarged receptacle. This is the exocarp. This is the mesocarp. And this papery or cartilaginous part is the endocarp. An example of a pom is apples, and pears. Aggregate fruits are formed from a single flower with several pistils. Usually, these are formed from apocarpus pistils or those pistils with ovaries that are free from each other. So each ovary will develop into fruitlets that merge together forming an aggregate fruit or the etario of fruits. For etario of berries, the fruitlets are berries that are attached to a single Receptacle. Example of this is the sugar apple. For etario of droops, each fruitlet is a droop that is attached to a single receptacle. Example of this is the raspberry. And for etario of akin, 
So if you still recall, an akin is a fruit where the seed is attached at a single point of the ovary wall. So each seed here in a strawberry represents an akin. And the fleshy portion of the strawberry is actually an enlarged receptacle. For the atari of follicles, each follicle is attached to the receptacle. For multiple fruits, the fruits are formed from several flowers that fuse to form a mass. There are two types of multiple fruits, the cirrhosis and the synconus. An example of cirrhosis is pineapple. So each eye here represents an individual fruit and they are attached to the receptacle. In synconus type, the fleshy receptacle or the rachis of the inflorescence becomes succulent and it encloses the minute akins. An example is the ficus.